yo, 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 yo. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Yo, my name is Chef Craig C. And I'd like to welcome you guys to another session at Disco Kitchen. Yes, Disco Kitchen, where my food meets my soul. Um, I hope everybody's doing all right, um, healthy and feeling well. I hope if you have, look at it, take a look back at my the last demo that I made um, on the immune system booster with the turmeric and stuff. I hope you did take utilizing that and taking your shots every day because you want to stay well during this coronavirus. You got to keep the insides, your immune system boosted and strong and healthy so you can get on back over here and <laughs> listen to some of this good old disco and eat some of this good old food. Um, today, the demo of what I'm doing today is one of my original recipes and I call it the Caribbean rice bowl. Actually, it's a fusion dish and it's a take on the Asian rice bowl. Yeah, think about the Asian rice bowl when they have all the other components around. So what I've done, if I've, I've, I've taken that and I've changed it and I'm putting the rice, the ingredients of this dish are ingredients of the African diaspora. The catering company I have is Diaspora Catering. So I concentrate on the foods of the African Atlantic diaspora, starting from Ghana, all the way down into the Caribbean, South America, Mexico, and the South in the United States, in the South of the United States. And what I do, I don't concentrate on one area. I take the ingredients that's created that the, that the air, land, and the sea produces from those areas, from those regions. So, and I'll take those ingredients and I'll play with them and I'll fuse them and I'll create my own thing, you feel me? Um, I studied a little bit on the traditional part of the foods, the techniques of how they cooked in their native lands, and I like that, but I also like to create. So what we're doing, we're going to do my original dish today, it's a Caribbean rice ball. Um, here are the ingredients. Oh yeah, so you probably noticed that that's a pretty big menu, man. It's uh, several components, like three or four different components. But to get started, the first thing I would probably do for, my, for me, this is what I would, I, I think this is what you should also do first, is you should do the pickling part first, for the pickled carrots and the pickled cabbage. You should make your pickling liquid, um, get it all together, and what you need with that, you're gonna need red cabbage, you're gonna need carrots, um, you're gonna need one cup, red wine vinegar, one cup of water, one cup of sugar, maybe a tablespoon of allspice, whole allspice, and a couple of sprigs of, of thyme, like three sprigs of thyme. I want you to get that in, get that going, get your uh, liquid going, and get the cutting. Um, check out the video.
Easy enough, right? That was simple, pickling liquid, simple. That's basically a classic pickling liquid, but mostly all pickling liquids, you add salt. About just as much as salt as you do with the sugar and water and the, the uh, vinegar. But that was easy. I didn't want to add salt to this one. And so again, this is my own thing. So the next thing I will probably do is create the marinade, get the marinade, um, put together, put all the marin every, all the ingredients in the marinade. I'll show you that. Um, get it together and get your shrimp marinated. Peel your shrimp if you're getting the shrimp that you got to peel and devein. Peel and devein that. I'll show you that. And you also want to get your portobello mushroom marinade. So you're going to make that recipe two times. So you can have enough for your mushrooms and enough for your shrimp. You're gonna marinate them separately. And I'll show you that right now. Check it out. pretty simple too. Mostly everything is simple. It's just like following directions, like to the T. Um, you just gotta be focused to do it. None of this stuff is hard. You can learn how to read recipes and learn how after you taste them, what you can add, put your own thing, own twist and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So recipes are basically just general, broad diagram, just a, just something in general to keep you Keep you in focus on what we're trying, the flavors we're trying to get. But you can always add more or less. So the next thing um, that we should get done going is our rice. We're gonna get our rice going. Um, I'm gonna show that. And at the same time, once we get our rice to the simmer, I'm gonna put a timer on my rice for 20 minutes. And at the same time, that that timer is gonna serve as a timer for my rice as a timer for my portobello mushrooms. How about that? So, check it out.
Yeah, so that wasn't bad at all, was it? The rice, if you follow the directions on the recipe, the, the, the written recipe, and also from the time lapse, you follow that to the T. All you need to put it on is for 20 minutes. Set a timer for 20 minutes, bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, you want to get it down to a nice, low simmer. Once you get it down to a nice, low simmer, cover it up, leave it alone. Set your timer for 20 minutes. Set your timer for 20 minutes and leave it alone. So leave the cover, that'll be really nicely covered. You know what I mean? 20 minutes and it's gonna come out perfect. Leave the rice alone. Do exactly what I said. Leave the rice alone at the end. All you may have to do is adjust the salt. You know what I mean? The seasoning, you might need a little more salt. But if you use chicken stock, you don't need as much salt as you would if you use water. Um, it's gonna have a great flavor. At the same time, I, what you saw is um, the marinated portobello, portobello mushroom. was all, it's done marinating. And you can put it on a roasting pan. I, I use a piece of aluminum foil, um, something flat and shallow. Put on a roasting pan, have your oven set, I'll show you, at 350. And you can put it in and use the same timer as you have for your rice. You can use the same timer as you have for your rice. 20 minutes, might go a little longer. To me, you can eat mushrooms raw. So are you getting on the portobello, you want that good texture. So, and, and it's just nice, good and chewy. Got the marinade in there, it's gonna be delicious. All right, so next, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start, what we can do right now is we can start getting our side, we got 20 minutes to get the rest of our side stuff on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dice up the pineapples. Um, I'm gonna dice up the pineapples and I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, cut the plantain and peel the plantain, the unripened plantain that we're gonna make our tostones with. Um, right now, while we're doing this, you wanna get your oil for the tostones going, rolling, because you want it to be hot, because it's almost like a deep fry, but you want it to be hot by the time you're ready to get to put it in there. So all of this stuff is going simultaneously. Mind you, the shrimp is, the shrimp is marinating as well. So as soon as the rice is done, rice is gonna hold the heat. As soon as the rice is done, I'll have everything ready, and the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss the shrimp, um, saute the shrimp real quick in a while. You know, a shrimp, maybe three minutes, you know what I'm saying? Toss the shrimp and then when you get it out and ready to play, the shrimp will still be hot. So, yo, here we go with the plantains and the cutting of the pineapple. that's the pineapples and that was how you cut and peel the plantains unripened plantains right so my rice is still going I'm not sure how much time I got left on it I'm wasting time when I stop to do this but um, 20 minutes is almost over let me see how much time we got uh, we got one minute one minute left one minute left for the rice and one minute left for the mushroom as well so I pull my shrimp out we about ready to go baby so now I'm gonna show you guys the cooking, the whole process of the tostones. Tostones is what they call a uh, Puerto Rican dish made out of unripened plantains. I love plantains, so many different textures, so many different ways you can use it. You can actually use plantains as a bread. You can use the tostones as a stack. You can do the chips. 
You can do them as garnish. You can do them as croutons. You can do them as mashed, like a mashed potato. There's so many ways that you can use the plantain. And it's a vegetable. Actually, it's a fruit. It's a fruit. It's no gluten. It's gluten-free. And you can use it as so many different things. I love the plantain. But this is what we're going to do with the plantain today. We're going to make a toast on it, which is going to be some of the garnish or additive to our Caribbean rice bowl. Check it out. Sweet, right? Hey, but you haven't seen nothing yet. Here's a little trick, right? Plantains, right? When you, when you cook them and you deep fry them, all you're doing is trying to get them to a little color, not much color, just a little color, because mind you, they are unripened, so they're white. You want to get them just a little yellow, and yellow, you can feel it where it's a little creamy inside. Here's the really fun part. Here's the really fun part about Tostone. You'll get to watch and see how this works. I'm not going to fast forward, I'm going to do this right now. And I also showed you that the rice, how, how, how really fluffy and nice the rice is. You saw that in the time lapse. Um, you see the rice again. Uh, so here, look. Check it out. It's a little trick that, that we have with the plantains. I'm gonna get you down so you don't need to see me no more. All right, so these are the plantains that I just took out of the grease. Um, I let them rest. I sit them right here and I let them rest. It's maybe about five minutes, let them rest. I keep my grease on so I can keep it hot. Turn it down just a little. Keep the grease on because we're not finished yet. So here's what we do. Um, there are places that they have plantain press and they basically made out of wood like this Jaja Home board. <laughs> My friend Jen and Jaja Home gave me, gifted me this board. But the um, plantain presses are basically like this, uh, made out of wood. And they go like this, right? And they smack, they go down and they smash them. About, about this big, two boards basically with a hinge on it and you put them down so you can, you can like smash like six of them, seven of them at a time because you got to spread them out, give them room to flourish like a little flower. But we don't have that. So this is what we do. We take a little, let take a pan or a pot, make sure the back is clean up. And you take it and put it on top. Boom. Uh-oh. That was a good one. I didn't, see, okay, this is great. This is great. These are, I see you put, I put a couple in a little late, right? And they weren't cooked all the way. So this had to be one of them. But never do you fear they're going to turn out good. That was good to see when you don't cook them good enough. So I put, two, it was two of them that wasn't cooked long enough. I, they, I can't, once I put it back in there too late, it's too late. So we're still going to use it because it's still good. So you just take it like this. Bam, that was cooked. You can tell if they were cooked or not because the way they smashed down. That's another one. So the grease is still hot. That's another one. See how beautiful they look? Plantains are dope, man. And these are the unripened ones. They aren't so sweet. They aren't as sweet as the sweet ones. Like in Jamaica, they use the sweet ones. They already ripe. They, they so sweet. I like those too. Puerto Rico and Cuba, I'm sure some other places, those are the places I know, like to use the unripen and they make tostone. Like, like this right here, the texture, I wish you could feel the texture of it. Still kind of hard, right? Still got kind of hard, starchy. It's a lot of starch. I'm not sure if it's natural starch. Is it starch? One of my chefs let me know. This is starch I gotta read up on. I don't know right now. So I'm wondering, is it starch that makes them so hard? Or is it that they're just unripen? You know what I mean? And they still hard. Who thinks of that, man? Take some unripe, unripen, and actually use them. And use them. These things can be used as a bread. If I just took the plantain and cut it lengthwise, I did the same thing, I'm doing the same thing that I'm doing right now.
and then we're gonna play. All right, so we're gonna get over here, get out the way. Yeah, so we're gonna go, next we're going straight with the shrimp. Um, and then we're gonna play, and I'm gonna show you how to play. Huh? here we go, baby. Just go kitchen. Yeah, so here we go. We got our shrimp, we're about to get our shrimp going. So I'm gonna heat this wok up. I already had it started, see if we can heat it up, a little smoke point. I'm gonna add a little oil right now, we almost ready for it. A little oil, switch that oil around one more wok. Yeah, so that was pretty much, we pretty much done right now. The whole thing was, we just texting. Yeah. We pretty much done right now. Gosh, I gotta be somewhere in 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing plated for you. Uh, we're pretty much done. Everything is happening. I forgot to show you guys where I took out the um, portobello mushroom, but it went on the same time as the rice. So you pull it out at the same, same time as the rice. So we are getting ready to plate. And you can play, plating is the artist thing. You can do it how you want to do it. But I'm gonna do it like this, and you can do it like that. It don't matter. Check it out. So, take a look, two plates, identical. Yes, sir. And I know it's good. I do this one all the time. This is one of my favorite ones, man. Yo, it's your boy, Chef Craig C, man. Make sure you do one thing for me, man. I put this all together for y'all. All I'm asking for you, you got a good old recipe that you can, Get your pee, you probably can sell it if you're selling out the crib um, and, and make some bread. You feel me? So all I'm asking you to do for me, please just do this for me. Subscribe to my channel. Click subscribe. Click the subscribe button. Share this with your friends. Don't let them share that. Let them share it with your friends. And when you send it to them, tell them, would you please subscribe? Because we got more. Craig got more stuff coming. Chef Craig C. Been about that business. For a long time, and I'm just finna give it to y'all, man. It's time to give it to y'all. It's just that time, right? It's just that time. So subscribe, uh, share, and turn on the notifications so you know when the next time I'm doing something. You feel me? On the food side and the disco side. I think this weekend, we back at Green Room Studios. Me and DJ Vicky Love, we're gonna be putting it down on the house music disco. This is Chef Craig C, your boy, UD, Disco Kitchen. One more again. See y'all next time. Drink y'all shots. Drink y'all shots. Stay well. Peace.